Welcome, 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 welcome back, 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 back to another, to another, to another episode of Bronx and Dongs. And today, 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 we're on the Cutter Cast, baby. Let's go. Oh, you betcha. I love it. Oh. Welcome, welcome to the Cutter Cast Vlog Cast. My name is Seth Larson, and on today's episode, episode number two, we are going to be sitting down with the one and only Tyler Olson. Now, Tyler is the young man behind the rapidly growing YouTube and social media platforms known as Bronx and Donks. I know it's a brilliant name, we're going to get into it. Tyler's been a partner of Canvas Cutters for coming up on two years now and he's an incredible young man producing incredible content. So if you haven't seen any of his videos, I'd strongly encourage you to head on over there after you listen to this episode and check them out. Fair warning though, they are thoroughly entertaining and it will bring out the cowboy or cowgirl that lies deep, deep inside all of us. It's somewhere in there, just trust me. But without further ado, let's listen in to a great story of how Bronx and Donks came to be. Looking okay in there? Okay, good. Yeah, okay, great. All right, folks, welcome to the Cutter Cast. Today, as mentioned before, I'm sitting here with Tyler Olson. He has graciously driven up. Driven up, driven up. I believe it's driven up. Definitely, definitely meant to say driven up to uh, the studio to talk to us today. Thanks for coming, by the oh, way. Man, thanks for having me. I'm excited <laughs> to do this. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was so excited when you were like, yeah, I would love to. I was like, yes, good, yeah. good. I wanted to meet you too. This is the first time we've actually it's, met. This is the first time we're meeting in person, yeah. Yeah, and I've been working for you guys for a while now. Yeah, you have. I actually remember, so um, it might come as a surprise to some people. I find it flattering, but we get, now Ben, it used to be me, but... Ben gets messages almost weekly from people saying, Hey, I've got a YouTube channel. Do you guys sponsor people? And, and he'll go look at them or I'll go look at them. And it will be a kid in high school with 300 (laughs) subscribers to the YouTube channel or following. Right. And so I remember actually when I got your email, uh, I was inside my kitchen. I got your email and at first, I was like, oh, just another YouTube channel wanting a a sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. And then I looked at the channel, and I was like, oh, he actually has subscribers. Like, you were yeah. a few thousand, several thousand at the uh-huh. time. And I was like, sweet, Ben, you need to check this out. Because Ben's over all the affiliates and, right. and stuff. So I was like, Ben, you should you should check this out. And he didn't even talk to me. He's just like... <laughs> 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 done. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Let's move forward. And then he, yeah, he's like, yeah, we, he's just, he's exploding. He's awesome. Let's go. Dang. Well, I think it's cool that you guys have kids reaching out to you like that with YouTube so channels. So do I. And I mean, I'll give props to them. When I first started my channel out, I was way too nervous. Like, yeah. first of all, I was way too nervous to post on a YouTube channel, let alone tell my friends I had one. And then I would have never reached out to a brand that early on so well, that's you know cool. what like cool. i think it's cool that they're brave i yeah. also i also think you have to be a little realistic with where you're at and what you're doing right, right? oh because I mean, yeah. you have to imagine all these all these brands get hit up all the time by people yeah. for for gear or for a partnership so if you do reach out to them you should have something planned out like right 
show your value. That's what they want to see. Do you bring value? And so I remember the night, actually, I reached out to you guys. We were planning a big pack trip, and we were just going through all these different things we needed for it. And uh, I remember watching a canvas cutter on some of those Mm -hmm. um, YouTube channels, actually. And I couldn't quite remember the name of the product, so we just started looking it up on Google, (laughs) just going through everything. And we're like, yeah, this is it. It's canvas cutter. And we're like, it's like a tent and a bedroll in one. It's going to fit on the pack saddle perfectly. And I'm like, I don't think they have a whole ton of cowboys representing their no, brand either. We don't. So I'm like, maybe I'll pitch it to them that, you know, I could use this product and there's a whole nother market out there that you could use it for. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we reached out to you guys and you got back to us pretty fast. And before we knew it, we had a couple better roles <laughs> yeah. and they were appearing in videos. Yeah, so. dude, we, we are so grateful for what you do too. Like, we That's appreciate awesome. it. And and it it does not go unnoticed at all. You guys crush it. Yeah. Well, you know what's cool too is people like watching them. You can go on your YouTube analytics and see what parts of the video people are skipping through. Mm-hmm. And usually when I like talk about a brand, you can see like a dip in view duration. Yeah, skip. But over the canvas cutter project prom product, like people just watch it. They think it's really? interesting, especially when I have it up on my meal and I'm talking yeah. about it. Yeah. It just kinda it fits in perfect with the vlogs. That's awesome. So. I wanted to and maybe this is for uh Bronx and Donks cutter cast episode numero dos but um i i wanted to talk to you about how you how you pack them i know uh, some buddies of mine they've been using them for years and years and he's always telling me it's my friend's dad Uh he's older and he's always like we went to cowboy christmas a a couple years ago and he came up to our booth and he's like you got to make sure you tell people how to pack them right i was like Okay, like how? He's like, you don't don't roll them up. Leave them unrolled and you throw them over the panniards. <laughs> yeah. And then you cinch them down and it acts like a panniard cover and it balances really good. And I was like, all right, you need to do a video about that. We you sure do. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. I usually don't do that. But uh, um, disclaimer right here, I'm not a professional packer <laughs> by any means. I just throw it on and cinch it down. Yeah. But the nice thing about them is they're just – you can throw them up there and just do what I do. Just jimmy rig it and they stay on. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about them, you know, ripping through the yeah. trees or anything. So. I yeah. Mean, you'll have to try it out. He swears by it. He's like, that's the way to go. Cause it, it yeah. balances really nice. Covers your panniers. We're yeah. actually, I was, oh, I better not talk about it actually on this, <laughs> but we're thinking about a, a product for that market marketplace for, oh, for really? that pur- purpose. Yeah. To go with it. But we'll have to talk later but yeah so so you reach out you have been working with us for a while now this is the Mm -hmm. first time we get to meet but i wanted you to come on and to share with our audience who you are and how this whole bronx and donks thing started okay okay Uh, first like where did you where did you grow up have you always been around horses and mules yep i grew up on a ranch here over in emory county and, uh, you know, I think to give my YouTube channel justice, we kind of have to start like in high school. Let's do it. So, um, back when I started, obviously you'd grown up on a ranch. I wasn't really rodeoing or anything at the time. I was really big into sports. Like mm-hmm. football was my passion. And that's all we would do is, you know, work out after high school and play football uh, my senior year, I was the head captain of our football team. Obviously, you know, um, it would have been cool in college, even if I just got accepted to some little junior college. Yeah. That's what I wanted yeah. to do. What and position did you play? I played running back and wide receiver so quite a bit. I played yeah. running back, well, <laughs> fullback, halfback a little bit, and then linebacker. But that is yeah. awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then in little schools like that, you can play both ways. Yeah. So we played, yeah. you know, the whole game. So yeah. it was just a lot of fun, and you're just hanging out with your friends the whole time. And, you know, so rodeo and ranching was kind of on the back burner. I was more focused on just playing sports and hanging out with my yeah. buddies. Uh, come my senior year, I get hurt really bad. I, it was actually at a football camp. I got tackled, uh, and I was running the football, and the football actually, I landed on it funny, and it got sucked up under my rib cage. Ooh. And, like, the weight of everybody on me, it just destroyed my spleen. Oh, my and I, I was out for the season. 
So Which had to be devastating. Yeah, it sucked really bad. Actually, after that, I don't think I ever went to a football game because it was just too hard it was too to go. Depressing. Yeah, yeah, it sucked. But you know, um, my buddies, some of my rodeo buddies, now they kind of pulled me in. and They're like, "Hey, you can team rope. That's not going to hurt your spleen." So I started team roping a lot, and I got accepted to uh, go rodeo over at Snow College, just the junior college. That's awesome. So I was pumped for that, and I I put all my time and effort into that, and I actually went out to Texas, and I internshiped out there under Al Bach. He's a four-time world champion healer. Oh, my God. So I don't know how I landed that deal, but I went and interned (laughs) for him, and, you know, I learned a lot from him. I, I never got great at team roping, but I got good enough. I could still go compete at these college rodeos mm-hmm. and have fun. And I think because of that, if that would have never happened getting hurt, I'd have never started my channel. Because when I went to college, I had horse stalls. Hmm. And um when I had horse stalls, you know, I could bring um horses to college with me that I could train and sell and make money. Yeah. And like kind of a big thing my dad always told me was, Hey, when I went to college I had to work like at a furniture store hauling furniture like all day or like right at right as class would get out i'd be hauling furniture yeah. and then at night i'd be doing homework and it just sucked there's got to be a better way to do it he worked like two jobs through college and he's like yeah i think the way you got to fix that is become an entrepreneur you know you got to free up some time for yourself do it better make more money this is your dad yeah that's really good advice yeah so he kind of inspired me you know to bring my own horses there start making my own money by training and selling them. And as I started bringing horses to college to train and sell, I realized, hey, everybody and their dog is a horse trainer where I live. Like everybody you know is a horse trainer. So it's really hard to make money doing that. Yeah. So what I ended up doing is like just going on the local classifieds, seeing what was for sale. And I seen these mules. And these mules were expensive. And I was like, what the heck? Why are, why are people paying so much for mules? It kind of blew my mind. So so you and mules up to this point hadn't had yeah, any history? Not really. I think my dad had two mules growing up that we just kind of sold off right yeah. away. Like I, I had pretty much no experience with them. And, yeah, I, I didn't know they were worth so much money. So, actually, there's a local guy up here. I uh, reached out to him, and he had a couple mules. Uh, he had... Well, he actually has a lot of mules, but he had a couple that he needed training for. Hmm. So I took a couple of mules back to college with me. And of course, like if you're riding a mule, especially around rodeo people, they're, they're going to roast yeah. the crap yeah. out of you. Like, so many people just would roast me, I remember. but Which I, mean, I don't get, which I don't fully understand. It's, and it's because I'm not well, an insider, but mules, like they're smoother to ride. Yeah. They're more sure-footed. Like, yeah. They just, some people think they look funny. I think they look beautiful. I think they're awesome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but people, like, especially rodeo people, they're really proud of their horses. So when you're bringing, like, a donkey in the arena with them, you know, they'll definitely poke fun at you. <laughs> but, hey, it didn't matter because yeah. the money was good. That's I made right. a lot more money training mules than I did horses. Were they similar to train, easier, harder? It was a learning curve for sure when I first took them. Um, they learn, I'd say... Like when you're teaching them how to rein, they learn a lot slower. But once mm. they know, they know. Whereas a horse, you know, you could get them reining really good the first day you're out riding them. And then the next day, they've already kind of forgot some of that. Mm-hmm. But you can reteach them really fast again. But then, you know, they forget a little bit every day. It's like, you know, two steps forward, one step back yeah. every day. But yeah. as a mule, you know. Uh, it just took forever to get them to rain right. But once they knew, they knew. Yeah. And they were just really smart. And you could just, um, a lot of people call them stubborn. But it's more of, I don't know, intelligence. Intelligence, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it was a little bit of a learning curve. But I picked it up really fast because I just jumped right into it. I, I started taking a ton of meals in, probably more than I should have. So I was just super busy doing that. And I, I had a lot of fun because it was just us out riding in the hills looking for yeah. sheds. And then riding horses and getting paid to do it. Yeah. So, what were you going to school for? I wanted to become a vet. Really? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I guess we'll get more into that. I was one class away from... Uh, I, we can bring it up later. Okay, but, yeah, yeah. Um, so these mules, 
they were making me decent money, but not exceptionally great money. Mm -hmm. And I, obviously when you're rodeoing and paying for school, there's a lot of bills to pay. Yeah. And so how long is it taking you to train a a mule and get it to a point where you can sell it? Well, when I take a client mule on, I take them for 30 days and I get paid at the end of every 30 days. I kept it. Yeah. When I was selling a mule, I'd want to keep one for about three months before I sold one. It just kind of depended on the animal. But Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure I could put my name behind it before I would sell it. So usually three months minimum. But I was like, there's got to be a better way of marketing these mules. Just because, you know, putting them on the local classifieds does an okay job. But it's not really setting me apart from everybody else. Right. So, uh, and then when I would post them on the local classifieds, people would text me wondering like, hey, what can this mule do? Can you send me a video of it? Can you send me all these pictures? So I was like, you know what? There's got to be a way I can just put all these videos and pictures together in one spot. And then I don't have to be t- sending out all these emails and yeah. text messages. And that was YouTube. That, that was the spot to put it That's all. Awesome. So, I mean, the YouTube channel started out as just us kind of posting short little videos on meals we were selling. Mm-hmm. And they didn't get a whole ton of traction, like maybe a thousand views. Which that actually surprises me. I would have thought yeah. less than that. And I think a lot of those views were just coming from people looking at the classifieds. I'd leave the link to my YouTube video in there. Mm. So it was just a lot of people That's interested awesome. in the meal. Yeah. So I was pretty stoked about it. But in my mind, I was like, I don't know. Like, I want to do a better job. It just wasn't good enough for me. I was like, I got to separate myself from everybody else doing this. Mm-hmm. So... That's kind of when I just started taking a deep dive into researching YouTube, researching all these other social media platforms. And, like, I read one thing that just blew my mind. It was that YouTube is the second biggest search engine, second to Google. And it's bigger than, like, Bing, Yahoo, and a couple others all combined. Yeah. Yeah. And that blew my mind. Now Amazon's right there with them. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I didn't know that, but yeah, it just, it was crazy. So, um, as I was going to school and my YouTube videos, you know, they were doing okay. I kind of started getting the thought in my head that, Hey, maybe you can make this YouTube horse training thing like legitimate. Cause I really enjoy doing it. You know, most of the job is just out riding in the Hills, which I love mm-hmm. being out there. Yeah. So um, eventually, uh, I graduated from snow, uh, moved to a bigger college up in Logan. And my, at this time, my videos had started getting a lot more views. And what I started doing different was I started posting more of videos of myself talking to the camera, explaining what was going on and just kind of walking people through my day in mm-hmm. a way, showing the highlights of, you know, a long cattle drive in 10 minutes. And yeah. people really liked that. So those videos started taking off and I was like, okay, you know, this is becoming more and more legit. Yeah. This is, uh, looking more and more like I'd be able to do this. And, um, obviously I was wanting to be a vet. So those classes are pretty dang hard. So I had to either focus my time on classes or filming and editing, posting. And I would go through phases throughout college where, I would have a video do really good and I have just so much fun doing it. Yeah. So the whole next month, all I wanted (laughs) to do was edit and post and I'd kind of blow off a lot of homework doing it, which was bad for my grades. Yeah. Yeah. It usually doesn't work out. Yeah. And then I'd snap out of it. I'd be like, no, 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 no. You need to become a vet. That's the safe option. So I'd go back to my classes. Yeah. And I'd start, you know, making my grades back up and because you got to keep a high GPA if you want to apply for vet school. So. Um, I was on pretty good track to apply for vet school up until my senior year. And I think my senior year, I caught senioritis really bad because <laughs> my YouTube was just doing awesome. And I know like it could have been doing so much more awesome if I was investing time yeah. into it. So my senior year, we made the decision, you know, um, COVID hit and whatnot. Yeah. So classes were pretty much canceled anyways. We made the decision like, Let's just go full in on YouTube for two years. And if it works, we're going to stick with it. Yeah. And I was actually like one class away. I needed an internship and one class to graduate with my bachelor's. So 
that's probably not the smartest decision to drop out like right at that time. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it was. I mean, I don't regret it. I don't regret it at all. So I, uh, I, I was almost finished with my master's degree when I stopped to do canvas cutter. Yeah. Yeah. It was just canvas cutter was taking a, a lot of time to, to run and I already had another job and I couldn't give the amount of time I needed to either finish or do canvas cutter. And yeah, I took the leap and, and did <laughs> canvas cutter. And a lot of people are like, what? Like I just yeah. needed to write, write my thesis and I'd be done. And yeah. And I didn't, I'm, and that's, I don't regret it though. Yeah. I totally relate with you there. Like it's hard, um, to tell your parents, Hey, I'm dropping out of college to do YouTube. And they're like, yeah. what? Uh-huh. What? <laughs> Especially like, I don't know. There's just a ton of people who were like, really? You have one class left and you're going to do YouTube? So it was hard. But um, I think since I've dropped out and started posting more, you know, it's kind of quieted them down a little bit. They're not so much like, yeah, what are you doing, man? You're such yeah. an idiot. Yeah. But it was hard. Like, I think that was one of the hardest parts of deciding to do my YouTube channel. Because did I, you name it Bronx and Donks back then? Yeah, first it was the very first name I gave the channel Bronx. That's and Donks. awesome. Yep. That's cool. You get a Bronx, which is a horse, and <laughs> <Yeah>. a donk, <laughs> uh, donkey. Put them together. Put them together. Get a mule. Get a mule. Yeah. And then we ride both of them on the channel. So yeah, that's awesome. But so you your channel's been up for three years. How long has your been channel been up? Twenty seventeen, right? I think. Uh, we we created it in 2017. Okay. I'm not sure when we posted on it, but I just I think I noticed the oldest video on there's three years old. Oh really? But yeah. maybe maybe that's not. That accurate. sounds about right. I think we created the channel and then we waited a while to post on it. Which makes which makes this. I have a couple numbers here. Okay. That I'm thoroughly impressed by, and you should be proud of. Like any anybody that was shocked at you not finishing college to do this <laughs> should look at other channels and then compare yours because <laughs> this doesn't happen to too many people. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. So your oldest video on there is three years old and you're almost at 200,000 subscribers. Yeah. We're getting close. Tyler, <laughs> dude, they're pretty dang cool. I have friends that have YouTube videos for quite a while and they're, that's insane. It that's is. insane. Like that's, that's not, that's not normal. It usually takes a long time and like really getting every single upload and the algorithms and playing around to really dial it in and, and get something going. Yeah. Not only that, check this out. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear this. So you're, you're, you're not at 200 yet. You're at 172,000 subscribers, but that's close to 200. Mm-hmm. How many subscribers do you get about a week? Mm. Depending if I post videos consistently, I'll get like close to seven or eight thousand a month. So seven or eight thousand a month. If I'm not posting a lot, I don't get a, whole a few time. months away, dude. You're two two hundred thousand, yeah. which is like Sweet. pat on the back. Yeah. <laughs> um, you have seven videos with over a million views. Yeah, that's crazy. That that one's hard to believe. And you have two more. There's two others that you have. That are really close to over a million. There's one that's like 978,000 and another one mm-hmm. 920 something thousand. Like yeah. in a month, there will probably be over a million. That will be eight, that will be nine videos over a million views. To put that oh, into pers- perspective for my own self, for people <laughs> watching or listening. Yeah. So I looked up the largest football stadium in the United States is uh-huh. Michigan State. Okay. It seats 107,000 people. You wow. feel that th- the amount of people that's watched your most watched video has 1.6 million views. Oh man. You feel that stadium 16 times. Holy cow. That's crazy to think about. Yeah. Cause the biggest stadium I've been in holds like 63,000. And I was like, this is a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. You feel you feel a, a stadium that fits a hundred thousand people sixteen times with the amount of people that that's watched that video. Yeah, and it's awesome when I, like uh, 
those some of those videos were happening while I was going to school. So you That's can awesome. see why I was so distracted. With oh the my channel. word! Yeah, I would be instantly. Yeah, but I I think I am so like thankful, and it's so cool that I'm getting all those views. But I look at it in the perspective of I'm just getting started. I think like oh for sure this is just the beginning. Like I don't want to settle on just you know seeing that a couple of my videos have got views and then just kind of settling like a lot of big youtubers do mm -hmm. they'll start to get comfortable where they're at and not put in the effort it will so yeah, you can see it. yeah i try not to think about the numbers too much where i i think of you know i want to start getting better content mm -hmm. getting better stuff filmed i've just hired an editor so we're going to start getting out more videos like i think we're just starting the, oh you're so, which which is the crazy part like, yeah. if your oldest video on the channel is three years old and you're producing those type of numbers, just getting started, I think, is an accurate phrase for it. Yeah. And the potential up ahead is just so, so big. So yeah. you start you start this channel, you're seeing, like, really good traction taking place. Now, I notice in a lot of your videos, like, are these family members are they friends are they a mix of both because you have a lot of guys that will go out and you guys throw gopros on and, <laughs> yeah. and have um, these awesome experiences and some rodeos and do some crazy stuff yeah it's a lot of both some videos you'll only see my family a lot of them will be like my cousins yeah but i, I kind of yeah felt that I didn't a lot of them was are just my friends too. So it just mm -hmm. really depends on the video. But there's just a ton of guys I like to film with. A lot of guys like to come on the channel. And and do are they just coming on to help like get these cows rounded up and they're your friend or yeah. yeah. Well so what happens a lot of the time is I'll go work I'll go day work for other people. So oh, okay. if I know yeah. somebody's going on a big cattle drive I'll be like, hey can I tag along, herd some cows with you? They're like, sure. So I go hopping awesome. with them. And then like when we're branding or we're herding cows, mm -hmm. a lot of people like to come help us. So yeah. it just okay, kind of goes awesome. both ways. But And are they, are you trying to, are you guys going to morph this into like a crew effort? Are you wanting to try to create more content by getting them more involved? Like you just hired an edit editor, which is right. huge. Like that takes off a huge load. If Huge. you had somebody designated editing. Now, uh -huh. you guys just get all this film and let them go to town. So, I think it would be awesome to get a crew going. Just have, you know, your buddies going out filming videos with you all the time. That sounds like a fun job. Um, and I think some of my buddies are willing to do it. Uh, they kind of have the same problem as they're going to college right now. Mm -hmm. They don't want to drop out or anything. Yeah. So, it's tough. I mean, maybe when we start getting a little bigger, I'll be able to absorb them in a little better. Yeah, but I th I would love to have them in with me, and I think in the long run that probably will happen. But in the short term, it's just a lot me right now, a lot of just me right now. Yeah, and you're crushing. So, like, and I think you could keep keep that going too. Yeah, like, for I don't sure. think it's necessary that you bring people on. I was just wondering if yeah. if that was because I, that does produce more content, but then it also can produce the problems. Yeah, the and right. like. The problem we've been running into, which I've kind of solved now, is the editing time. You know, I'd love to bring on some of my buddies, and it's just hard to afford all that without yeah. getting content out. And editing takes up so much of your time. Like, I'm probably spending 20 hours of video just editing it. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't have time or the money to bring on my friends where yeah. in the future I probably will now that I have an editor. Yeah, so. yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. What... What are some of your, do you got some big plans coming up? So you are, yeah. you're, you're allowing this platform and you're being, I think you're being super smart with it, but you sell saddles off of it. You're yep. selling some merch off of it. Like, are you wanting to expand like a product base surrounding Bronx and Donks, the Bronx and Donks brand to support the the channel and to grow almost a business right. and the channel supports that business yeah we've put a lot of thought into that um we figured right now while we're so new and so early let's just spread out to all these other social media platforms grow them up as much as we can and then we're not going to rush into maybe the first product we find we want to find something that we really do want to put a business yeah. behind yeah 
So we've kind of been just taking our time doing that, but I think the biggest thing right now is just producing content. Let's get ourselves out there. Yeah. And like like on TikTok right now, we're almost up to half a million followers on there. TikTok or on Instagram, we're approaching 100k followers. So that's that's been our biggest focus right now. It's just getting yeah. content out. Dude, I am so stoked for you. It is Thanks, so awesome. Man. Thanks. Like what there are so many people that would dream to be able to do what you're doing and you're not that far away from making it, uh, from growing Bronx and Knox to a point to where like it really makes you financially secure, which is, which is exciting to think about too. Yeah. I mean, so you look at it from the outside and it does seem like a dream job. Like when we're out filming, that is the total right. dream job. Right. And that's what I'm pushing towards is that I can be doing that all the time. Right. But that's not yeah. the reality of what's yeah. behind the scenes. So much work behind the scenes. Like yeah. I'm in the office now, probably 80% of my week, just yep. figuring out editing, reaching out to brands, doing all sorts of things behind the scene that people just don't see. No. And, uh, yeah, but we're we're uh, slowly approaching me being able to just go full time out in the field getting content. And that will be the dream job, I think. Yeah, that's a huge step. And I I think it's important for people listening or watching to understand that it's not just like getting a camera and going and filming yeah. something and then it magically uploads itself to <laughs> yeah. YouTube and people want to watch it. Like it takes a lot of work to mm-hmm. create the content. And then it takes a lot of work to get people's eyes on it yeah. and, and to appreciate it. But yeah. For, so for reference, like when we're out filming, I probably have three GoPros running on average. And my GoPro, when I come home from just a day trip, I probably have four to five hours of footage on there. And everybody else has two or three hours. Mm-hmm. And then what I do is I, I don't think I'm a professional editor by any means. So what I do is I just throw out all the footage watch through it all and just pick out all the highlights from mm-hmm. that whole thing. So I watch through every Hours single bit of, of footage. footage. Yeah. yeah. And then it does take me a while to piece it all together and clean it up. So it's just, you know, so much time, and, but oh my word. it's worth it when you post it. It's like when it does good, you see that people appreciate your work and you know, it's like a full day, like a full day out on the trail narrowed down to the, coolest 10 minutes of that right, day right and people just think that's awesome and it's so fun like to finally have it uploaded it's satisfying but well you do a really good job too i, I wanted to bring up i love when you throw in like little clips of other <laughs> movies and stuff <laughs> that goes along with the inside joke that's happening too it's yeah. it's awesome and it's a good way to to break to break up the content like yeah uh, to keep it flowing and to keep it entertaining yeah, it's fun to do that, especially when you, like, we'll always say, like, uh, say my buddy Brett does something funny. Mm-hmm. I pull up the footage. I'm like, dude, I'm about to meme you so hard. <laughs> and they're always like, no. no. <laughs> oh, my but, word. Is he, is he, has he recovered from uh, what, what, <laughs> oh what gosh. mule took him for a ride? It was like so, George or? It's, it's a female mule named Doug. Oh my, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> yeah. She's ticked off. She's like, how, <laughs> where do you get the nerve to call me Doug? Yeah, it's like the boy named Sue. Yeah. She's mean because she's been called dude, Doug her whole life. she is mean. <laughs> she I watched is. that video. And I yeah. was like, how is Brett alive? First of all, he, yeah. and he's a tough dude because he was in some serious hurt and he was just like trying to be as cool as possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, get this. We get a new intern from Texas. He's never seen a mountain or anything before. <laughs> so we're like, ah, oh, let's just go break him in. Take him on a little ride up in the yeah. mountains. We take him up there. We didn't even bring GoPros cause it wasn't supposed to be a crazy day. And just a couple minutes up the trail, Brett, gets bucked off wasn't anything serious a couple more minutes up the trail brett gets bucked off again and we're like okay this is starting to get serious i start pulling out my iphone getting <laughs> yeah. ready to get some footage yeah. a couple minutes later his mule just bucks straight down a hill and uh when you're riding mules you need britches on the back of your saddle or else to hold the, it on yeah or the saddle will slide right off the front of his head like go is over it just his head. their their build like yeah. does that that doesn't seem to happen as much with horses horses have better withers okay. um but, like, a saddle won't slide back as far on a mule. So it's mm. kind of opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, anyways, yeah, he didn't have one on his saddle. And the saddle just went right off the front of his mule. And he fell in front of the mule. 
And then the mule jumped on him with his front legs and oh. his back, back oh, legs. Oh, my word. So he was beat up, and he landed on a rock pile, How did too. that not, like, break his back or I don't know. He's lucky. Ribs. He's lucky. We So when it happened, I really thought he was hurt bad because he usually jumps right up, and he just laid on the ground, and he's like, I'm not okay. <laughs> so we're like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. He's really not uh-huh. okay. Luckily, we had service or whatever, so if we were really in trouble, we could have called yeah. somebody, but. Yeah, he uh, ended up getting like seven staples on his head. He just had scratches and bruises all over. And he went on vacation the next week. It just <laughs> ripped him right out of his head, like on vacation. We're like, that, dude, you're crazy. Ooh, yeah. But a lot of rodeos like that happen on our channel. And yeah. a lot of stuff kind of like that we don't really want to post. Just YouTube's kind of picky on what's okay. Do they dude. make that sensitive? Yeah. You're kidding Yeah, me. so... I, I cut a ton of things out of my videos. I think they could be so much cooler. And it's not like, I don't know. It's just stuff like that. If I would have recorded Brett getting mucked out that day uh, and showed like the cuts on his head or mm-hmm. whatever, definitely demonetized. Are you kidding me? Yeah. See, we get it in the hunting world all the time. And now mm-hmm. they're doing this big like cruelty to animal thing yep. to where your channel could just get deleted and shut yeah. down. And that's but I of, wouldn't think like riding a mule and getting bucked off and then showing the aftermath would get you demonetized. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's even just like little things you can put in your titles that'll get you demonetized. Like once I put we were out vaccinating cows and I used the V word vaccinate, demonetized. So it's like Are it, you kidding me? I know. And then But like, that's what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And then Branding cows, obviously, that's a big one. You can't do any of that stuff. And I still will post some of that stuff because... Because it's yeah. called life. Yeah. It's a big part of like, the cowboy culture. Yeah, 90% of the people watching your channel do that. Like, uh-huh. that's just part of life and yeah. running cows. Yeah, for sure. So oh it's kind of word. a bummer. I and would then, have not never thought that. Yeah. I was about to say, like, it's so cool that you have this channel around, like, Western culture because you miss out on, like, getting demonetized on this. And, but <laughs> apparently you don't. No, it's a big deal. And we get a lot of haters, too. Like, I think a lot of people report our just videos. don't understand, like, you're yeah. hurting that calf because you're mm-hmm. actually saving it. Yeah. Like, if there's a calf separated from the herd and I have to rope it, that's animal abuse, according to them. Oh, my word. So... It gets, it sucks. You're saving its life and they're just like, (laughs) you're animal abuse. Yeah. Dude, I'm sorry. That's rough. Yeah. It's, it's a, I found a lot of ways to get around it though. I'll just cut out some things and I I still think they make really good videos. No, you're crushing. The videos are awesome. It just hurts my soul that you have to do that. That (laughs) you have to worry about that. Yeah. And that's. That's like a big worry of ours is one day our channel could just randomly be deleted. Yeah. So that's why we spread out to all those other social media platforms as well. And we have a backup YouTube channel too. And it's like up to 20,000 subscribers. So is that the Bronx and Donks Extended? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So you have the Bronx and Donks Extended. How is that different? That's just a backup? You're uploading the same videos or are they different? Yeah. Right now we're uploading videos on there that just don't make the cut for the main channel Mm -hmm. so they'll be good videos but maybe they're only like three minutes long Hmm. so we're like uh we'll we'll upload it on the second channel there's you know people still want to see this stuff but i just want to be posting the best of the best on the main channel keep my algorithm good keep my view duration up so if i think it's still a good video but not you know the greatest I've ever made, I'll put it on there. Do you ever know, can you ever tell, like, this video is going to do really good? Yeah. And this one's not. Can oh, you? yeah. Can you call them out? Um, we recently were down in Arizona, and this horse got away from us. And have you seen that video yet? I saw it on there. I haven't watched yeah. it. Yeah, that video, I, I just knew the second we got done filming that, I was like, dude. This is going to be a good This one. video is going to hit a million views. And it's on track to do it. Like, yeah, it's performing awesome. really good. But it's just like... You know when something crazy happens and you get good footage of it. I'm like, I think I'm going to be able to turn this into a good video. And then other videos will surprise me. Like, I'll just be posting just a regular old cattle drive. Nothing crazy will happen. But I just do a good job of commentating, I guess. Or, you know, just do a good job of taking people along on the ride with me. Yeah, you do. And those videos do really good. And they surprise me because I'm like, nothing crazy happened. It was just a normal day on the trail. 
So I think people were really interested in just the whole. It's super. Yeah. I don't know why, but it's really. I do know why. You guys are doing awesome things, but it's surprisingly easy to watch. Like really? I don't have a problem watching from beginning to end. Where sometimes I'll check out people's videos and skip through and stuff. Mm-hmm. I find myself watch binge watching several of your videos and being thoroughly entertained the whole entire time. Oh, and nice. then there's the moments where you guys do ha- have a rodeo and it's funny to watch yeah. or <laughs> a fight or a bear coming at <laughs> yeah. coming Holy out cow. at somebody or like there are highlights but the whole video is like fascinating to me yeah. I think so. It's kind of weird too like I I'll film a video and I'll be like I that's weird that that just happened. Like I'm always thinking, what are we going to do for the next video? And then something will just happen. And it's weird to me. I'm like, there's probably been so many things before I started a YouTube channel that have happened that I've just forgot about. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah. And that's, that's definitely the easiest thing about my channel is we don't have to really go out and find content. The content finds us. Yeah. Uh Yeah. That's awesome. But well, thank you again for coming on. I hope you keep just crushing it. I'm sure you will. Oh, keep crushing, you. keep growing this thing. Where can where can people find you? Find me on YouTube, Bronx and Donks. Go and subscribe. Make sure to like and leave comments, positive ones, because it actually does help. That's right. And uh and it means means a lot. And yeah. then you're on Instagram as Bronx underscore donks underscore. Yep. Yeah, Bronx underscore and underscore Donks. Okay. And what's your other platforms you want to shout them out? Yep. TikTok, same thing. Bronx underscore and underscore Donks. Pretty much just type in Bronx and Donks on any (laughs) of the platforms. You'll find me. You'll find them. Okay. (laughs) Go go check them out. It's awesome stuff. Keep it up. And thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Don't forget to buy some canvas cutters. That's right. Especially if you're packing. Logo dominate. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, thanks, Tyler. Yeah, that was fun. What an inspiring story and what an incredible young man telling it. Tyler, thank you again for coming on the CutterCast. It means a lot to us here at Canvas Cutter. Now there's one thing I can say with certainty and that is this is not the last time you've heard of Bronx and Donks. Tyler is doing incredible things and is going to continue to do incredible things. So I'm super excited to see where he and Bronx and Donks ends up in the years to come. It's super exciting. I hope you follow along as well. Thank you all for listening or watching. If you would do us a favor and like, subscribe, leave a comment below. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please leave a review. It helps us grow and get new listeners as well. Don't forget you can share it as well with people if you are enjoying it. For now, I'll see you next time. Bye.